The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Hi, welcome back to Element 14 Presents. I'm Adam, and today we're going to upgrade a broken Sega Game Gear, make it more efficient, and add a few more features. Let's get started. Amazing hacks. Inspired designs. Each week, Element 14 Presents brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. The Game Gear is one of the most iconic Sega systems. It was notably one of the first handhelds to have a color screen and to be backlit. The Game Gear was launched in 1990, and at the time, white LEDs did not exist. So they used a fluorescent tube to backlight the screen, and that did cause a vivid picture, but at the same time, it did cause power problems. And to add to that power problem, the system only used six AA batteries, and that only led to a few hours of gameplay. So to combat this, I'm going to replace the fluorescent tube and the high voltage pieces to LEDs to increase the efficiency and to increase the battery life. I'm also going to implement lithium polymer batteries to make the system rechargeable and to increase the battery life. Lastly, I'm going to 3D print a new case to make the system thinner and allowing me to permanently attach the Master Gear accessory to the system, making the system able to play Master System and Game Gear games at the same time. The Game Gear was pretty easy to disassemble. It's only held together by a few Phillips head screws. And one of the reasons why the system is just so thick is because of the AA battery holders. So when I switch from AA batteries to LiPo batteries, I can make the case thinner. The Game Gear is separated into three boards, the motherboard, the power board, and the soundboard. And I did notice that the motherboard fits roughly edge to edge in the case, meaning that sadly I can't really make the length or the width of the case any smaller. To not damage any working Game Gears, I chose to use a broken Game Gear so I could first fix it and then I can upgrade it. And the Game Gear I purchased, um, surprisingly, was in really good shape, despite it not being able to load any games. I purchased some caps online to replace the original 20-something year old faulty ones, and once I replaced the ones on the motherboard and on the soundboard, the system booted. After I took off the light reflector, I could see the massive fluorescent tube. I ran a few tests to find the power consumption of the original system, and I found that at 7.4 volts, it draws roughly 350 milliamps. And then after that, I desoldered the fluorescent tube and all the high voltage components that went with it. The LiPo batteries will give a voltage between 8.4 and 7.4 volts, so I ran all my tests on the lowest operating voltage. And I found a significant decrease in power consumption after I desoldered those components, going from roughly 350 milliamps at 7.4 volts to roughly 100 milliamps. And after that, I began thinking what was the best alternative to use instead of the fluorescent tube. I first designed a small PCB with SMD LEDs to act as a backlight, and I thought that this would consume less power and it would be thinner, but I did not consider the effect the LEDs would have for being so close to the screen. Even with diffusers, I found that there was no way I could stop the LEDs from being seen through the screen without the assembly being larger than the original reflector. So the next option is easier and more effective. I read online that LEDs fit pretty well in the holes in the reflector, meaning that two white LEDs could take over the job of the one fluorescent tube. I tried this out and I found it works best. It still drastically reduces the power consumption while staying pretty bright. After the white LEDs were installed, I found that the system only drew around 130 milliamps, and that can be compared to the original system drawing 350 milliamps with a fluorescent tube. The Master Gear accessory was released in the early 90s to play Master System games on the Game Gear, and since the Game Gear is really just a smaller and portable Master System component-wise, this seemed like a good move by Sega. When taking the converter apart, I realized that there were no components on the board. I was expecting maybe a chip or two, or a resistor, or just something, but there was literally no components on the board. They were just traces going from a Master System connector to a Game Gear connector. That was it. So because this converter is mind-boggling simple, I just made a pinout going from a Master System connector to a Game Gear connector, and just wired it directly to the connectors. So I'm bypassing the entire cartridge route of having a dedicated cartridge for the conversion. Instead, I just wired the traces correctly, and it worked. I went through design after design of the case, trying to fine-tune any errors I made in previous models. And since the D-pad and the buttons are so iconic, I designed the case around it. 
One of my first ideas for the project was implementing a hinge mechanism that would basically flip a master system connector on top of a Game Gear connector. And this looked good on paper and when I was designing it, but in reality when I was wiring the connectors, it got insane and this was just not practical. So I opted to have a Game Gear connector on top and a master system connector on the other side. Hi, I'm David from Element 14 to the Electronics Inside. Join me as I tear down toys, tools, appliances, modern, vintage, classics, and even some new releases just to find out what's inside. I'm gonna first go for the classic, which is Lion King. Just try that. Um, the screen definitely doesn't look bad in person. It's those LEDs are a little hard um, to find good viewing angles, but um, I think this will look pretty good. It looks pretty good in person. On to Sonic. I did learn, um, I initially had a cartridge error where um, it would not load past that original screen which was produced by Sega Enterprises. And I was trying to figure out was that a cartridge problem or was that, I don't even know, a screen problem. But I, um, I learned that there was this one pin on the cartridge that was bent the wrong way and I had to replace it. But after I did that, all the games started loading again. So I fixed that problem. So now this game is fully operating. Definitely a fun game. I played this on both the Genesis and the Game Gear before. But I will say this fits pretty well in my hand. I like that it is a little bit thinner than the original, but other than that, it, it feels roughly the same because I couldn't make it any um, smaller, like length or width wise, but it does feel thinner, and I appreciate that. Um, I might try to attempt to um, shorten the. Uh, board some way, you know, maybe cut it in half or something like that and then wire the traces back, but that just seemed very um, risky. <laughs> so I just went with uh, not shortening the board in any way, just because that is just one other error that might happen. But this still plays pretty well, and it fits pretty well in my hand, and I appreciate it. And I think it is more portable than the original version. The Master System games go on the bottom, so that's the one thing that I wish maybe I can change next time, is that I can't really like rest this on a table anymore because of that but there's no other place I could have done it you know my original design I wanted to have a hinge but I can't really do that especially with the wires so this will work fine but um the next version I'd like to maybe adjust it so that uh, maybe this is on the other side or something like that I can't even tell which one's my character really oh I see it now okay took a second I'm not great at this game. <laughs> so this is just a beat-em-up, I'm pretty sure. Which are always pretty enjoyable. <laughs> I'm a little surprised though, I can see this pretty clearly, whereas that missile defense, I kind of struggled seeing it. Um, but this is not bad at all. I think my ultimate Game Gear project turned out pretty well. It definitely improved the system, because previously I didn't play this too much because of the battery life, but because the LEDs and the lithium polymer batteries, I can play this system hours on end and I don't really have to worry about the battery life as much as I used to. And I'm also stoked to be able to play Master System games, because previously I've never owned a Master System or any games at all for the Master System, so because of this new mod, I'm really happy that I'm able to play Master System games easily. Have you ever played or modded the Game Gear? If so, let us know at the Element 14 community at element14.com slash presents. We'll see you next time.